Hey, welcome back, everyone. Jack and has most of the questions. So when God is giving us divine favor through people, especially leadership, but other people think that we are getting so many opportunities and secure about ourselves, about themselves. That case, what should our response or that would be to us after just being official, not done anything to burn this table? Yeah. <laughs> so Jack, yeah, that's a good question. I would I would say what what did Daniel do? What did Joseph do? Okay, uh, we look at scriptures. When God's favor is upon us, we will definitely see, uh, you know, that our leaders will be uh, more favorable towards us. Not because of, uh, you know, not because of what we are doing, but it's about how effective we are working. Now, always remember that we are not able to control other people's thoughts and emotions. So. My responsibility would be to give my best to the organization that I am. It is their choice to believe whether you know that a favoritism or favoritism. That is their choice. Right? You, we cannot control their thoughts as well. So, but what you can do is you can just stay down. Okay, that when when the uh, when the decree came that if you worship any other people. If you don't bow down to God, to uh, any other God, uh, we'll put you in the line of stem. Can I even go to his colleagues and say, oh, you know, these are the problems that I'm going through. Now, why did you come up with this? He just acted normal. Right? He just said, this is, this is what I will do. And, uh, there's no account of Daniel arguing and fighting, uh, causing any problems with his colleagues. He was minding his own business. His colleagues had a problem with him. But I'm sure Shannon would have just been wrong. Same thing with Joseph. Right? Uh, it was the favor of uh, Potiphar initially, the favor of the, the uh, leaders there. But it was not like Joseph was trying to prove people. He, was, he just knew. You know, the Bible says that while he was in the prison, God favored him. And so we cannot control what people think. Uh, but one of the things we can do is now we know that God's favor is on us. We should not act over smart. I say, oh, you know, this is how I am. I will say what I want to say. God's favor is on us. So we, we just learn to walk in humility. Uh, but there will be times, you know, you just don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to explain anything to people. As I always say, choose the battles you fight. We'll come and say hundred things, and you choose the battle you want. So in this case, what I would do is I would continue giving my best for the organization, continue to work hard, continue to know that God is on my side, and the favor that I find for my leaders because God is pouring on that favor. Right? And people may like me, people may dislike me. I cannot do anything about it. Right? But I'm going to be normal. I'm going to be, uh, Respect and love them and treat them well as my colleagues. That will not change. That I hope that answers your question. Okay. Okay, we want to use the power of a gentle response. We we have two more points and then we can get to the next chapter. Next one is keep gossip and strife out of your work environment. Proverbs 17 and verse 14. Let's read. The beginning of a strife is like releasing water. Therefore, stop contention before a quarrel starts. Very, very dangerous in an organization. It can literally bring down the morale. The whole organization can crumble into pieces. Right? There's something called as office politics and we've heard it a lot right how many of you worked in corporate have you worked in the corporate sector you have okay right. and you, i'm sure most as many of us online also have uh you know and office politics is common it's not uh, it's not like devil is targeting you it is common it's there everywhere right office politics is going to be there uh but one of the things that you and i can do is 
when when there is things like uh, gossip or strife that is happening number one stay away from it stay away from gossip if 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 five people are talking about something talking about a leader or talking about uh, why somebody left an organization stay away from it you don't need to know it you don't have to keep talking about it it's not going to help you in any way what will we know by gossiping nothing we'll know end of the day you, you, you know we've spoken so much and we are tired no use right uh, but keep gossip and strife out of your work environment when as much as possible when you see a sign okay this is going to be a topic of gossip stay away from it when you see a sign that this is going to cause strife between my, me and my colleagues stay away from it now if you're leading an organization you set the principles initially if you are working in the organization then this is something that you have to deal with is there going to be strife and gossip in a church now you're leading a church there'll be strife there'll be gossip now don't say who started the gossip i want to know who's that person i want to no just leave it so choose what you have to do people will gossip people will cause strife choose but as leaders you there are some places where you will have to resolve matters right um, but otherwise just stay away from it right show troublemakers the door that means tell them that's the door you can please leave proverbs 22 10 read that let's read that proverbs 22 10 past out the scoffer and contention will leave yes strife and re reproach will cease okay here there are two categories uh, reminded of you can have a person who's not performing underperforming right and after many reviews many meetings giving them opportunities giving them strategies giving them tools to become better you see there's no improvement what do we do maybe one two three warnings show them the door say okay i don't see improvement now the second option second is you may have a people person who's high performing right 95% in everything but causing trouble causing strife causing gossip starting rumors or person who is uh, you know always talking rudely to the colleagues to his colleagues um, not interested in you know uh, listening to the managers and leaders you can have that but he's a performer what will you do give him also one two three warning show him the door if there's no improvement remember character also is important just because somebody is performing and he has a if, if he has a very bad character and you don't see improvement in a character not not right he has to be he or she must leave but you can uh, and the other side you know you can you can also see people who are not performing but they're got a very good character right and they're willing to learn keep them give them op more and more opportunities right remember the organization or the team supersedes the individual that means just because one person is performing very well doesn't mean you keep him even though his character is bad no the team is important because this one person can cause a spark of fire to the entire team the entire team can get into trouble because of this one person right so the organization supersedes the individual at all times right so we come to a close in this chapter time on people processes performance and rewards and even as we uh you know we deal with people and we establish processes remember processes happens over time when you start an organization uh you may have 5 10 people working with you you may not have a process in place but over time processes are established and then performance and rewards are given to employees okay uh let's get into chapter 9 uh i, I was just talking to some of the students here uh, i think we may need to go a little faster 
so that we can complete the portion. So, uh, but feel free to stop me at any time, right? If you have questions. Okay, workplace relationships. Now, 40, 50 hours of our life is in the workplace. Right? Eight hours into five. Or keep nine hours into five. Right? 45 hours a week is in the workplace. What are we doing there? Are we robots sitting alone there and working? No, there are people, right? and we work with them. So let's look at a few scriptural truths to help us build good workplace relationships. Now, if I don't have a good relationship with my boss or my colleagues, I wouldn't want to work there. Yes? And if you have a boss who's always troubling you, all you say, oh, Monday, I don't want to go to office. Again, the same story. Yes or no? Right? But if you have a boss who's you know just encouraging, you no, know, not troubling you every time. Okay, Monday, let's go. Right? Uh, and and so, how do we build good work race, workplace relationships? Let's look at a few points. First one, maintain love. The basics of human relationships. Let's read First Corinthians thirteen four through seven. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or ir irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fails. You know, sometimes we get into the office and we forget about the human side of things. Uh, we get focused on tasks, deadlines, meetings, all of these things, and we forget that we are dealing with people. And each person has their own story, each person has their own challenges, each person have their own uh, you know, things that they're going through in life. And, and very important is to walk in love. People may be highly skilled, highly knowledgeable, yet they may be feeling lonely. People may be in the top positions, yet they may be feeling suicidal. Yes? Right? Remember that when you're working in an organization, we are to be kind, we are not to be jealous, we not to be conceited or proud of the knowledge and skills that we have. Uh, uh, don't keep record of the things that people are doing against you. Forgive, forget, don't applaud or support anything, anyone who's doing wrong. Never give up on your colleagues, be supportive, believe God for the best, never stop loving them. Now the question may come, how can I love them when they did so many you know, they cheated me or they did so many things wrong. The Bible says that God rewards or God is the one who justifies us. Right? So it is our responsibility to walk in love and forgiveness. Right? So in an organization, uh, you know, remember if you see a guy who is, you know, in the top management, right? Or you, you get to a place of you know, of high ranking, you know, in an organization, don't forget to walk in love. Even when you look at, I remember, you know, when I was working in one of these corporate sectors, we had this uh, head of global development, right? So he was head of the global entire world, a certain department. So he's a high ranking guy. And I remember him very well, okay, very, very genuine person. And we were all entry level, right? This maybe entry or level two. But this guy was a very genuine person, right? He would uh, come to office and he would strike, he would always talk to the lift guys, right? those who operate the lift. He would always talk to them, right? And he would uh, come to these cafeterias, he would stand in the line, 
right? And we will all be with these, you know, food trays and hey, he's come here. Why is he come here? But now I understand why he did all of this. He was not a believer, right? He loved his job and he loved the people that he worked with. He was just a normal person, but he was head of global development. Right? He's a big guy, big shot. But he just walked in such humility. And he he's he even now people talk about him and we talk about the organization. We talk about him. Remember he did this, right? Remember he came for he would eat in our cafeterias. He would catch the regular cabs. He had the opportunity of you know just having a single cab for him dropped home. He would say, No, no, I'll go in a regular cab with the regular folks. Right? That is a powerful example. When we walk in love, we, we let our guards down. And we say, Okay, I may know you know things which are very high or very big, but all that goes out the door because I'm walking in love. Very simple. Right? And you and I must develop this ability. Second point, when you have the opportunity to bless someone, do it. Okay. With random acts of kindness, uh, it may be something very simple. Uh, learn to help people. Right? Uh, when you have the opportunity to bless them, bless them. Next one, be sensitive to people's feelings. You know, emotional intelligence matters. There's something called as EQ, which is emotional intelligence. Uh, that is to recognize and manage your own emotions and react and respond correctly to the emotions of others. Right? Emotional intelligence. Imagine you're a manager, somebody comes and tells you, uh, you know, I lost my loved one last week. And you're a manager, right? And the manager says, oh, I'm very sorry to hear. When can you finish the report? What will you say? What will you say? You'll say this person has zero EQ. Sorry? <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Okay, you'll say this was a zero EQ. Why? Now the person, this employee is going through a hurt, an emotional hurt. It doesn't matter to the manager. But as a manager, he must be able to simple empathize with the person. Right? Not ask, when will you finish the report? So are you working today? When will you finish the report? No. Right, uh, your EQ affects your interactions with your people, with your colleagues. Right, uh, your performance, your leadership skills. Your EQ is to be sensitive to people's feelings. They'll, they, you know, there will there will come a time when you know, you know people in your organization will come and tell you, you know, you're managing a team. They'll come and say, "Hey, I don't feel like working today. They, I got up from the wrong side of the bed." Very upset today, angry at everything. It's too hot. Breakfast is cold. Lunch is not good. Tea is cold. Everything is going wrong in the morning. You come to office also angry. Right? As a manager, this person may come and say, Hey, uh, I don't want to work. Man. I'm getting so upset here. So, as a manager, what do what, what you say? You better work. You want salary? You work. We, sh we shouldn't be that way, right? We need to empathize. With it. Okay, I know you may be going through a rough day. I've gone through those rough days also. Just start working. You'll get used to it. In two hours, you'll feel better. We'll go have a coffee after some time. That is better. I'm saying you want salary work, right? So EQ, emotional uh, intelligence, is very, very important, right? Be sensitive to the people around you. Cheer somebody up, especially when people need an encouraging word. Words make a lot of difference. We talked about this. Yes, our words can really impact people. It, it, it can impact situations. It can impact the things that we are going through. So use good words, right? Cheer somebody up. You know, sometimes your colleagues may, may be going through a very difficult time. 
right? They they're going through challenges. They're going through. Uh, I remember this one colleague who would, uh, uh, you know, he he was always upset, always sad. And uh, after a long time of just just being with him, I got to know what was the reason. The doctor said that he will not have a son and not have a child. Right? And so he was devastated with that news. And so he was always very sad and very, either he's very sad, he'll be quiet, or he'll be very angry. But no one bothered to find out what was his problem. My, our managers didn't bother to find out. But over spending time with him, I, 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 and he opened up with me. And I remember I was too young to understand a few things, but uh, I didn't have a good solution for him. But what I did say is, hey, don't worry. You know, uh, I know that this is a difficult time. Uh, but it was somebody he, that he could relate to. And, you know, and so whenever I saw him, I knew why he was sad. But people didn't understand. People would call him grumpy, angry. I knew it was something personal in his life that was affecting his work also. And it's a big deal. Right? Married, unable to have a child. And uh, you know, so good words can a sweetness to the lips. We talked about that, right? Please don't forget to say, don't forget to say please, thank you, and sorry. Uh, you know, these are the golden words, right? That we always say, please, thank you, and sorry. Now we teach our children this, right? Every time I give something to my kids, I say, what must you say? Thank you. And when they, they're walking by, they by mistake they kick any of our leg or they trip and what must you say? Sorry. Right. Uh, then they say, Can I get dinner? You give them dinner, what you must you say? Thank you. Not sorry, thank you. <laughs> okay. So why do we do that? Because we, that's simple basic etiquette right that we must have and sometimes when we get into the office we forget all that no thank you no please no sorry you have to do it no right learn to be kind demonstrate kindness be an encourager even of those you don't like oh this is the tough part while most people tend to compete and outdo and perform when you step in, be an encourager, right? Be an encourager. Now, I, I you know, the first thing that came to my mind was, you now I remember I told you we had when I was in the call center, we had these uh, contests that would happen, right? And so there was this one guy he was brilliant on calls, right? So what I would do is in my break, I would go and sit next to him. I would say, hey, don't come here, don't come here, because he had his own way of getting all the Oh, leads. And so I wanted to learn from him, but I would go and sit next to him. He said, hey, don't come here. Because he was the best. I was maybe third. Right? There was another guy who was there. This guy was top. Right? He would come and he would put that headset. You can't hear what he's saying. And he'll do something on the computer. It's a lead. And we'll be struggling for one lead. Ten minutes we're talking. No, sir. No worries. You'll get it. Don't worry. This guy, he gets it so easily. So I used to go sit next to him. Initially, he would say, go ahead, don't sit here. So I went away. But then after a few days, whenever I would go to him, he would say, OK, go and sit. So he'd, he'd make me sit. And he'll, and you know, especially the lunch break, he'll tell me, I'm going for lunch at 1 o'clock. So he, he'll come back by 2. right? So then I'll, I, I'll make sure that I either finish my lunch before or after so that I can go and sit with him. So I would go. Right, and then I would sit with him, and I would watch him. He's taking the calls, and he would work and watch and learn. And, and he began to show me some ideas. Right, so you do like this. When they say, "I don't want to give credit card information," you say this. They'll give it to you. And I tried it. Next thing I know, <laughs> I'm getting the leads. I, I I started becoming the second best. Now this guy is still making 70, 80 leads in a day. We are at 45, 50. Second best is 45, 50. The best is 70, 80. So I'll go and sit next to him again. Tell me, you're doing something else. What is it you're doing? Right? And, and so I began to learn. And he began to share everything with me. Right? And there came a point we were doing 
75 80 leads in a day there were months where you know me and another friend we beat him and some, there were months that i was able to beat him and he was a, it was a good competition healthy competition but you know what he would always tell me he would always say i knew that you'll do well very sweet guy he's not a christian right he's not a christian he would come he would start you know doing all that in front of the he had some four five gods on his table and but a very sweet guy right and he would very genuinely encourage me and i, I remember as he was exiting out he said i think i should give this best reward to uh you know uh, paul from the other team and i was so humbled because he was he was brilliant in his work right and uh, you know when we be an encourager we begin to you know take people from one place to a higher place and i can share so many stories at apc that people have encouraged and you know it's enabled us to be better in what we do right so uh rem you know you and i most of you students you, you can start off here you know don't wait to get into an organization then start be an encourager here if somebody leads worship pastor francis is leading worship encourage him right the people who are uh, uh you know probably praying well say hey i i feel that you are you have this wonderful gift of praying continue to build on that or i see that you have good communication skills Com continue to build on that but you're encouraging them right remember even enemies can be turned around proverbs 16:7 when a man's ways please the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him stay positive stay calm stay especially in difficult situations when your opponents when people are against you stay positive stay calm those enemies also will turn right uh, be careful who influences you proverbs 27:17 please read that <coughs> Verse 27, 17. Yes, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. friend. First Corinthians 15, 13. Don't walk, be fool, bad companion, companions, ruin, good character. This is these are two verses that I always make my kids read. Say read it so they open the Bible, proverbs 27 17 as iron sharpens iron so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend don't be fooled bad companions ruin good character so i tell my kids choose the right friends if you choose bad friends you'll end up doing bad things you choose the right friends you'll end up doing good things Iron sharpens iron, right? In the workplace, this is applicable not only for children, but even for adults. In the workplace, keep a healthy profession, uh, professional distance from those who have negative influences. Have you seen people? Everything is going well, but they'll find something negative. They're experts in that, right? To find something negative. Hey, the food is, you know, what a spread, you know, you have biryani, you have kebab, you have everything here. But one person would say, but the sweet was little watery. Everything else is good. <laughs> yeah, people will find the negative in the best of things. Number one rule, stay away from them. I say, okay, I know this person says something. So better move away. And so there are many times that I've walked out of conversations from people who are negative. Many times. Just walked out. I said, where's Paul? He's not there. Why? Because I don't want to waste my time. Uh, take time to be with people who can challenge you professionally, who can have meaningful interactions with you. Because iron sharpens iron. If you have somebody who's only talking negative, you will feel negative, you will keep doing what is negative. Everything will be effective. But if 
But if you take the time being with people who can challenge you and build you up, I in charge. You get better for your dreams. Next one. Know your boundaries and corporate exclusionizing. Proverbs 5 18 to 22. Let's read that. Proverbs 5, uh, verse 18 to 22. So be happy with your wife and find your joy with the woman you married. Pretty and graceful as a deer. Let her charms keep you happy. Let her surround you with her love. Son, why should you give your love to another woman? Why should you prefer the charms of another man's wife? The Lord sees everything you do. Wherever you go, he is watching. The sins of the wicked are a trap. They get caught in net of their own sins. Yeah. Now, remember, we talked about building relationships. Right? In an office, there will be male and female. Okay, you cannot say I want I want to stay away from sin, so I will join an all male organization <laughs> or all female organization. The pioneer will say, "You please start your own organization." <laughs> which is all male, all female. No, there are males, there are females. Now, especially in the corporate, right? We have corporate out outings, corporate picnics, corporate gatherings, corporate uh, parties. Now, it's very easy to move from a place of workplace relationship to having emotional intimacy. Now, especially if you are married, when you're married, right? And you're... See, there's two things. One is adultery, one is fornication. Right? Adultery is when you're married and you commit sin with another woman. Fornication is when you know that you're indulging in sexual immorality. That is fornication. Right? Now, when you are married, know your boundaries. Set boundaries. These are the things I will not do. It is set. Right? So for example, if you're married and you're working in an organization, say, I will have people in my team. They may be, if you're a male, I will have girls, females in my team. But maximum will be a shake hand. Maximum conversation will be at the office surrounding people. Right? Not in private. Now, if I'm married, I will not take my colleague alone for lunch. Why? Because I'm married. I must remember that I have a wife, I have children in my home, and I must maintain my integrity. Right? It says here, you know, know your boundaries, stand by your priorities, and hold on to your godly standards. Now, some of us may feel, okay, you know, it's 2024. People will understand. People will understand. God also will understand. Okay. But the enemy will make us over understand. Meaning, he'll keep saying, that's okay, that's okay, go, that's okay. You, ne you never know what you get into. Right? So, for example, I may be driving and I may see somebody, right, who I know. And I know, okay, they're going to office or they're going to a certain place. I will not bother. Why? It's, it's not my responsibility. Well, well, what about God's love? God loves me still. <laughs> that doesn't change. I'm, <laughs> I'm protecting myself. I'm protecting myself, right? Now, this is important because we got to know your boundaries. I understand what you're saying. I have to help, but not at the cost of my family. I may have right intentions, but the devil doesn't have right intentions. He may have wrong intentions. What you felt was, okay, let me just drop them there. The devil can turn it into something else. So you and I need to be wise on what we do. Know your boundaries, especially now. I'm talking. This is if you're seeing. This is a church setting, but look at in the corporate sector. You've got to stay away, 
right the moment i became a believer i told myself i will now this is all too much okay but you have the choice but this is some things that i did from the time i became a believer i worked in the corporate i went for parties i went for you know picnics right two things i never did number one i told god god i will never indulge in drinking or uh, any of the things that they are doing i will never indulge in it because you brought me out of it i am your child i know that you are watching me so i will never indulge let them drink let them fall on the road that's their wish i will not do it right so i went for parties as a leader i had to go so i went i would see them drinking i would see them smoking and all of it but it never affected me at all because i knew god is watching me did they come and give me hey paul take care take nobody is there it's okay not nobody is there but take why are you worried you're not even married what do you do with your salary what do you do it's okay nothing wrong it's just one bottle you can have it it's okay you're not married we are married with children and we're said no it's okay god is watching after honor god that's one two is i will never indulge with a woman other than my wife when i get married when i get married and only then i will indulge it was decided in my heart and it was something that was set so were there women around in uh, in offices yes were there opportunities yes but i decided in my heart i will not Right. and and so these are things that you must do many times you know uh, in the workplace uh, this is before marriage uh, you know th there are people who have come and said can you drop me till then i said no i said no i can't you catch a auto you catch a bus you have to do what you have to do you do there's a reason for it uh, it may be old school but there's a reason right. i had decided that Right. But well, nowadays, generation is very different. I mean, not like I'm very old, uh, but you know, it's very casual. When it's very casual, God can take it and turn it into something else. Sorry, and the devil can take it into turn it into something else. Right. So you got to be very careful. What does the Bible say? Watch out! The devil is like a roaring lion, trying to deceive you. Right. So know your boundaries. Right. Recently, I was talking to one. one girl and she was uh part of our church uh and we were we were talking and she said uh, she's married i know that she's married and all that she said uh um, you know we're all going for uh, to meet for a coffee i i said yeah please carry on uh, cuz i think somewhere 5 or 6 in the evening um we finish life group and uh, so we're all going for coffee so no it was not a life group but it was just they were all meeting so they're all going for the coffee so i asked uh, and i saw there were only guys and i said to you uh, said to the girl you're going with all these guys for coffee yeah yeah that's okay i said please carry on i see uh, so i want to ask her, what about your husband no, he he knows he understands church people you know but it's wrong it's not something uh, of course i know this generation is is you know see the devil doesn't change through generations he is the same what he did how he tempted jesus he'll tempt same right now also right so you and i must be careful know your boundaries okay i won't spend too much time there honor your boss 10 point right proverbs 27 18 if you care for your orchid you will enjoy its fruit if you honor your boss you will be honored honor your boss uh in the next point says even the one who is harsh you may have a good boss it's easy to honor them what about the harsh boss of to honor them also it's even harder right but uh let let god you know be the vindicator meaning if if a boss is ill treating you or is harsh to you for no reason pray and ask god to intervene and and, and god can move upon this person's heart right um Psalms 103 verse 6 The Lord judges in favor of the oppressed and gives them their right. Right? So 
honor your boss, even the one who's harsh. Next point, develop workplace etiquette and cultural sensitivity. OK, we'll do this and we'll stop. Right? Proverbs 23, 1 to 3. When you sit down to eat with someone important, keep in mind who he is. If you have a big appetite, restrain yourself. Don't be greedy for, for the fine food he serves. He may be tricking you. Right. Proverbs is really interesting, right? Good workplace etiquette is important, right? Uh, uh, it makes people easy to relate to you, right? Using those please, thank you, sorry, very important. Uh, you know, when, so for example, when somebody is introducing you, you stand up. When somebody is talking to you, don't be looking here and there. That's basic etiquette, right? Uh, you're talking to somebody uh, in the workplace. Uh, you know, you're, you're you're standing in line for probably to get into the lift. Don't just come and just go into the lift like that without standing in line. Have you seen that happening? Right? They'll come. They'll say, "Come and in, go inside." So what am I standing here for? <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's basic etiquette, right? Uh, uh, and then simple things, right? You cough. You say, you know, you discover your mouth, and these are basic workplace etiquettes and cultural sensitivity right so we may have people who uh, in, in terms of uh, you know culture you know they may want to you know different cultures right I, I i know of people who wanted to remove their shoes and work it was to honor them i don't say why are you removing your shoes it's not like you'll become best performer <laughs> right so uh Learn to apologize when you make a mistake. What may be accepted in one culture may not go down. In another culture, avoid religious, uh, being religiously offensive to people. Right? In an organization, you may have people from different uh, you know, religions. Never offend their religion or their culture. Right? It's their beliefs, their systems. Uh, you and I are called to minister, share the gospel, but not to offend them, right? Uh, so when you're meeting with senior leaders, walk with wisdom. Do your best to take your rightful place. Don't try to put yourself in the spotlight or to promote yourself. Let others promote you. Let others put you up, right? Uh, lest to be made put to shame then otherwise. <laughs> Right. Okay. We'll stop. I think this. The final the chant of soul. We do is we'll pick up from here next class, and then we'll get into chapter ten, which is the Right. Okay. Any questions? Like uh, sometimes, uh, like we are talking about uh, not to involve in gossips or uh, don't sit there uh, or like don't hang out more with people of negativity who have negative uh, and uh, sometimes walking away also makes a strife walking away like from that group or uh, uh, when we are in when we are uh, part of discussion and when it's going in other way walking away makes a strife it makes us in the spotlight so how to deal and how to like uh, come out from the gossips and all, how to walk out in a wisely way. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, Prince, you have to see what scenario it is. Okay. Now, now let let's take two scenarios. First scenario, Bible college, right? Now you're in Bible college. All of you all are, you know, there together, and you feel that example. Okay, this is just an example, or just say college, right? Uh, there's one person who's always, you know, negative. Always talking negative. Uh, you can just tell the person, hey, uh, you know, why, why are you always negative? Don't do that. Uh, because you're in a certain level of understanding between each other. Uh, uh, and if, it, if there's no change, you, you can just tell them, hey, excuse me, I need to go. And you just walk out. It's all right. Because one is what your attitude and your, uh, what you are doing matters more than what he thinks, he or she thinks. Right? So... You can excuse yourself and just go. And normally, when you excuse yourself, nothing is going to happen, right? Uh, now, if you're in a place of leadership and you see it happening, 
right? Uh, where you see that, okay, this is uh, a problem that's happening where, uh, you know, uh, people are, uh, you know, there's this whole thing. What, what you can do is you, you tell them, okay, see, um, avoid this. Avoid being negative always because what you're doing is affecting the others, right? Uh, but I would say in the corporate, what I have done is I've excused myself. Right? So we were all having tea. Suddenly the topic comes up on, uh, hey, you remember what she said in the meeting? And then when they keep talking, I said, hey, uh, I finished my tea. I'll carry on. That's it. Very simple, right? Or, uh, hey, uh, I think I got to make a call. <laughs> Just move off. right? Uh, that way you're, you're protecting yourself right? from negative influence. Um, they may have many things. They may, they may feel bad and all of it. You can't control that. Your priority is to control your thoughts and your, the people that you are with. So, yeah. I know these things are hard, uh, uh, but I, you know, as leaders, I learned some things the very, very hard way, uh, and I decided that you know you cannot please everyone. You cannot please everyone all the time. You cannot please people, uh, whether in ministry, whether in, uh, you can do your best, but not everyone will be pleased with that. Right? So our responsibility is to do our best and give it up to God and let God uh, do his work. Right? OK, so we'll stop here. We'll continue from next class. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week ahead. God bless. See you next, time, next Monday.